Hi everybody, Tin Man again. Just an update where we're at with the hydrogen system, HHO generator. Uh, made a quick stand, stand everything on, easier to work on. Got our motor plonked on there. Uh, the only pulley I had was a large one, so that pulley's a bit oversized for the motor. Um, the motor we're going to be running just above idles. I've turned the idle screw up. The governor we're going to leave off. You can see that's on. That will be off. So it's going to be running purely just on where the idle screw is set. The alternator needed some rework. It was wired in delta configuration which was no good to us. Um, as you can see, I've had to go and split it. I'm not using one of the legs at the moment. I've wired up the other two independent. Um, had to cut this block in three pieces because that's our positive out on the alternator. That's to separate each coil in the alternator. Um, at the moment I'm only going to be using one leg of the alternator, the other one here is not being used. So we're going to be driving this off the one leg. Um, now I've got it going, we're exciting the field coil or the rotor uh, via my motor speed controller which I can adjust the amount of power we're putting into the rotor thus adjusting the amount of power coming out and into our cell so our cell down here now I'm working on worst case scenario the water looks a bit brown because it's out of the creek down the back so that's creek water I actually had a tadpole swimming in there for a while but I got him out so we're using creek water um, as a worst case scenario, no electrolytes, nothing, just water straight out of the creek. I did have it all hooked up and um, plumbed up and going into a, a bubbler out of this pipe here. But because I haven't conditioned the cells yet, the water got really brown really quick. Um, this meter here going to show us the voltage across the cell. I've hooked the two legs of the cell together so we're only using the one leg out of the alternator because there was too many volts across the cell with both legs. And this meter here is going to tell us how many amps we're putting across the rotor of the alternator. So what we'll do now is we'll try and start it. Like I said, we're running just above idles. I've turned the idle screw up a bit just to stop this thing vibrating all over the place. Our governor will be off. So what we'll be making is purely just on the throttle set as it is. It won't open up to compensate for any power drain. Um, and of course, because of the size of the pulleys, having the big one on our crank, um, that puts a lot more load on the motor than necessary as well so I'll have to get a pulley about the same size as this one I reckon so I'll see if I can get it going now it's going to be noisy so hope you like noise so as you can hear it's just above idle um, that's the adjustment for the amount of amps we can put into the rotor of our alternator. Of course our one-off switch. So we'll switch her on now. Let's try and get this.
interesting here is the voltage across the cell. It's producing a voltage even with the alternator now switched off. At the moment our motor is just ticking away. So with everything shut off, we're getting a voltage back across the cell from the um, hydrogen and oxygen that's reforming between the inner and outer cells so that's pretty strange I haven't seen that before but I have heard that it does happen so as you can see our creek water doesn't look very clean but anyway that's where we're up to now uh, the next thing to do is to make a proper pulse generator and then I'll fit that, see how we go. Now I'm going to let this run for a couple of hours, get themselves conditioned so we stop our brown water coming through. So I didn't think that was too bad on swamp water or creek water and that's just with the motor just ticking over. Alright, cheers from the tin man.